Good afternoon, this is CNT Collectibles. Hope everyone is doing well today. Today I'm going to do kind of a re-upload of a series I did last fall, and these were my best long-term investments at um, every position for baseball. And I was reworking it just a little bit. It was, it was pretty janky last year when I did when I did this. It was me flipping between a spreadsheet and fan graphs, and I felt I could do better. And well, that remains to be seen, but um, the format I've been using for some other stuff I kind of like, and so this is what I'll do next fall. So I'm just going to do this one right here, the third baseman, as I did third baseman last week. I'm like, all right, let's just see how this see how this works out here. And, uh, and and the reason I use this is it helps me kind of identify players on that longer term track. I think all anybody is trying to do is come up with um, you know investments, and in the short term you're looking for uh, news flow, free agency signings, trades, all that kind of stuff to uh, to buy a. Uh, to buy a player for a shorter term flip i'm more of a longer term bent and so what i try to do is find players on a hall of fame track and those are players that you can just kind of buy and forget about and you know in theory most of their value will hold up over time and one of the issues i had when i first did this as well was not just the appearance of things but i kind of conflated the uh some of the the, the war calculations win above replacement which i think is is kind of the, the first kind of the jumping off point for a lot of this stuff and baseball reference and fan graphs calculate it differently. So flipping between them uh, changed a few players. And you moved, moved, moved a guy down, moved a guy up. And so I wanted to get everything on the same page. So a lot of this comes from baseball reference. They do a really nice job with their Hall of Fame track. And so that was the uh, the other reason I wanted to kind of update this. And again, at the end of the season, I'll redo it. But this was just my test run. I thought I would share it with you right now. So when I'm looking at Hall of Famers, what I'm trying to do are guys on a Hall of Fame track. You know, I want them to hit a certain milestone by a certain age. And what I've kind of come up with is, can you get to 60 wins above replacement by age 35? It seems like that's when most players start to fall off a cliff. Some players obviously do better than others. But on average, and this, this gives me the jumping off point to figure out who I kind of want to who I want to spend decent money on. So um, the third base Hall of Fame stats, again, from baseball reference, we have 15 players in the Hall of Fame as a third baseman. The average wins above replacement is 68.4. The highest war is Mike Schmidt with 106. The fewest is Freddie Lindstrom with 27.5. That was a long time ago. They had a very low bar. And, well, wins above replacement wasn't really a thing in the 1920s, I guess. So four players have an MVP. Mike Schmidt has three of them. George Brett, Chipper Jones, and Brooks Robinson are the others. 3,000 hit club are Wade Boggs, George Brett, and Paul Molitor. And Adrian Beltre will make it four when he gets in. And the 500 home run club is populated with Mike Schmidt and Gary Matthews. Eddie Matthews, sorry. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Matthews. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is find players that can reach 60 wins above replacement by that age 35 and then coast in. So it's not a very linear thing. They're going to have seven to eight win seasons. Uh, and then when you get to age 35, maybe you'll have a couple two to three win seasons and just kind of play out the string there. But can you, uh, can you, can you hit those marks and stay relevant and so you know, i'll come up with the spreadsheet and um a lot of those players will uh yeah and so we'll just start to identify, identify players on that on the spreadsheet so chris bryant is a player that is age 29 and so then we'll put the hits and the home runs in there can you hit one of those milestones the 500 home run club 3000 hit club and that's kind of your ticket and for the most part as long as everything else is reasonable and he's he's off the track on on some of those but he does have a lot of other things going for him. So he's accumulated 24.3 war by his age 29 season. So to get to that 60 wins above replacement by age 35, he needs to average nearly six wins per season. So the recent injuries aren't helping him out a lot. And so this kind of puts him towards the bottom of, of the list. So, but his age, age, age uh, 28 Hall of Fame comps, Larry Doby, Larry Walker, Tony Perez, um, not bad. Those are bad, not bad names to be, uh, to be uh to share a, a track with so wards 2016 mvp three times all-star and a rookie of the year so he's got work he's got to stay healthy uh can he be a five or six win player for the next you know five or six years he's got to stay healthy because you know he can do it when he plays he does that so can he stay healthy and, and put that number up then it's it's consider you know then he should be uh considered and again the mvp is not going to hurt things all right anthony rendon this is a player that got moved down a little bit because fan graphs was kind of generous with their wins above replacement calculation it appears so 30 years old he's got over a thousand hits 145 home runs he's accumulated 30 just over 31 more to get to that 60 by 35 he needs to average 5.65 wins above replacement now he's done this um and this is what i like about anthony rendon is he is uh when he's when he plays really there's one season where i think he was like a four-win player I mean, anytime uh, every other year that he's played a full season he's been upwards of six or seven wins for replacement so if he can keep that up for the next five years 
uh, then you'll have that 60 wins above replacement. Now, that's not everything. That's just kind of the jumping off point. So it's H30 comps, Chase Utley, Alfonso Soriano. Terrific names there. Uh, with his wards, he's been in the top 10 in MVP voting for four for uh, four times. He has an all-star game, so he's been voted as a top 10 player in the league four times, but he can only make one all-star game. It's like, gosh, can this guy get more underrated? And he's got a couple of Silver Slugger awards. So uh, can he get a World Series? Well, he, I, yeah, he's got a World Series. Can he get um, some individual awards? Uh, the MVP might be kind of tough, but if he can keep up those top 10 MVPs, that's going to help things overall. And can he stay healthy for the next five years and play a little bit longer? That's the really the big question because you know his bat and his defense have really taken a, taken care of the uh, the wins above replacement requirement um, to get him started. So uh, again, terrific player. But there's you know, with all these guys, there's work work to be done here. And he's got a little bit more than some others, but he's also proven that he can do it. So Matt Chapman. H27, 398 home runs, 84, or excuse me, uh, oh yeah, he'd be in, right? Uh, 398 hits, 84 home runs. He's accumulated 21 more in his, uh, in his uh, what, 27, four years or something like that. So uh, he needs to average five and a half war over the next eight years, roughly, to uh, get to that 60 by 35. Mike Pagliarulo, Adair Evans, and Eric Hinsky are his age 27 comps. And so he's got a couple top 10 MVP awards, and we know about his glove, a couple gold gloves, and two platinum gloves as the best fielder uh at his position so uh he, he has work he's got a high strikeout rate went over him last year in this season and so this isn't a year-to-year -year thing this is a uh we don't we don't care about the end season we care about the end of the season type deal and so he's got five and a half wins of a replacement that glove could, could take care of a couple wins above replacement on an annual basis can he cut the strikeout stein down to 20 percent and uh you know if he's 35 home run guy while hitting 270 then sure i mean that's that that place and and can he play for um can he play for a long time is really kind of what that comes down to but yeah he's he's on a track and at the end of this we'll look at the price relative this doesn't do anything good without comparing the prices so we'll look at that at the end here but you could say matt chapman is on the track I'd like to see a few more years out of him before you go too nuts but at his prices you don't have to go too nuts and again we'll look at that at the end juan moncada age 25 392 hits 56 home runs has accumulated eight war to to this part and really what you want from Hall of Famers is can you start early and produce? And so if you're putting up four wins at age 23, you know, on an annual basis, that's pretty good. If you're putting up four or five wins at age 26, and this is why we do the 60 by, by 35, kind of that, that calculation, because a guy that comes up, you know, if you look at like a Lourdes Gurriel is hitting 25 home runs with, you know, a 300 average, like, wow, that's terrific. This guy's great. And then you look at it, he's like 30. It's like, hmm, that makes things a little bit tougher. So getting that early start has been huge for a lot of these guys, and, and Ron Moncada is no different here. So age 25 comps, Rendon. Eugenio Suarez. I throw Brett Lowry in there just because that, that name always makes me laugh. If you Google his, if you Google image him, you can see a pretty funny picture of him with uh, playing uh, Edward Forty Hands or something. So, uh, no awards as of yet. So we'll, with that, with that lineup, he might be overshadowed, over a little bit overlooked here. We'll see if he can put up some individual awards. But uh, he's he's got a nice track. So again. He's got a long way to go, but you know, for investing, this is a guy that I will look at because he is on um, on some sort of a track. Rafael Devers, age 24, 433 hits, 74 home runs, accumulated 6.3 WAR uh, to this point. But again, he's only 24 years old, so he's been up for a while and he's been producing. So he needs to put up fewer than five WAR per season over the next uh, decade plus to get to that 60 by 35. So I mean, this is a really nice, nice track if he can just kind of keep going with what he's doing. And well, it'd be nice if he, he was a little bit more consistent on things. <laughs> he has uh, he has some incredible spurts during the season, but he. He also has some pretty big slumps as well. So if he can even that out, again, he's only 24, no reason he can't, uh, then he could really be uh, something pretty special going forward. And this is another one of the uh, uh, the targets that I like here. Age 23 comps, Eric Chavez, Scott Rowland, Troy Gloss, Evan Longoria. So nice names in there. A lot of those guys had some health issues. Rowland was around for a while, but he was kind of a compiler. But the other ones were... Uh, well on their way but they had some health issues and that's always the risk with these guys so this isn't uh this isn't a hey you know <laughs> everything's good to go this is a they're on some sort of a track and makes it interesting for me at least so alex bregman i think this is our probably our third best player maybe fourth 27 years old 582 hits 105 home runs he's accumulated accumulated 23 war to this point it needs about four and a half wins above replacement uh, to get to that 60 by 35 to be in that conversation so he's got some hall of fame comps going for him chipper jones joe gordon jim tomey mike schmidt which are pretty amazing names so if he can keep it up for the next decade doing really what he even on a bad season last year i mean the guy was probably going to put up like four wins above replacement and had a 126 wrc plus so um, even his bad years are, are near elite so um he's got a couple of top five mvps 
He was arguably an MVP in one of those seasons. A couple All-Star games and a Silver Slugger award. So this is a player that is well on the track. But again, because of his, his age, a little bit more youthful. But I mean, he's established where he's at here. But a little bit more youthful. Then you can see his prices. Well, there's other reasons for his prices to be low as well. Um, but that's not what this video is about. We're not going to rag on him here. So he's just been a terrific player. And he's well on the all on the path. And, and this is one of my, uh, because of where he's at, one of my higher targets. All right. Jose Ramirez, age 28. 840 hits, 127 home runs. He's accumulated 28 more to this point here. So he needs four and a half as well to get to that 60 by age 35. His age 27 comps, Joe Gordon again, Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame for here, Green, Scott Rowe, and Chris Bryant. Um, I mean, you know, don't forget how good Chris Bryant was his first couple of years. He's pretty amazing. So injuries have sapped him in the past few years. So it's not a bad comp at all. So again, Jose Ramirez, another player that's, um, I think he's starting to get some a little bit of love here, but uh, he's really on a uh, really on a nice track here. And if he can put up four and a half WAR over the next you know seven season or so, again that's what he's been doing. So if he can have a couple six or seven win seasons, and then you know slide into that four or five range, you know getting into thirty five, and then you know two or three after that for a few years. I mean that really is what it takes. It's not like they're gonna get four and a half every season. So. You know, they're going to have some six or sevens and then, you know, come off. So that's just got to average it out. So awards, top five MVP three times, two two All-Star games, and three Silver Sluggers. And a terrific player, and we'll see where his prices fit in with everybody else, whether or not he is a good value. Nolan Arenado, 30 years old, 1,200 hits, 235 home runs. So those, you know, the 3,000 hit club, 500 home run club. You know, again, if you're going to be a Hall of Famer, you got to play for a while at, at a pretty high level. So up to 35, you know, wouldn't expect him to get there. Maybe at 37 or 38, it, it could maybe happen. So he's accumulated 40 more, 30, a little over 39 more to this point. 60 by 35, 4.1 uh, wins per season he needs to average, which his defense is going to take care of a decent amount of that. But as a very, very attainable, age 29 comps, Chipper, Roland, Longoria, Gary Sheffield, pretty amazing names there. So just keep playing, young fellow. Awards, top 10 MVP, five of those, five All-Star games, eight gold gloves, four platinum gloves, and four silver sluggers. So here's a guy that, you know, at age 30, it's like, okay, you can you can start to consider coasting at this point. Not that, not that he would. He's on a very, very, very nice track here. And this was one that Fangrass had the, uh, the wins above replacement pretty low. So the calculation was different. And so he's moved up quite a bit, just kind of staying with one of those things. And that's why I want to redo this to give out uh, accurate information as best I can. But yeah, he is, he's well on his, uh, well on the track here. And the defense is a big part of it, but you know, the bat hasn't been <laughs> bad at all. So see if he can write out his 2020 season in, in his, uh, his new home field and, and, and what he can do. But again, this just should be a, a high target for people looking for those hall of famers and the number one guy on the list. And this doesn't change from last year. This is why I was so big on Manny Machado last year. This is why I'm continue to be big on him right now. At age 29, he's got 1200 hits. He's got 223 home runs accumulated 40 war by his age 29 season which is i mean one of the best marks in baseball at that age really i mean mike mike trout obviously you know 20, 29 or 30 but after that um he's got 60 so to get to 60 wins by age 35 he needs to average 3.3 .3. can he just play can he just stay on the field and he's been pretty good about doing that um man he's and he's getting better and with that team um i, I think you get his motivation up and he'll just uh, I mean, he, this, this is just a completely underrated player, and I think he's just going to keep getting better. <laughs> so even at age 29, he's got a couple more years of very, very high production. And then if he does drop off in that three or four win player, well, that's just what he needs to average, really. So he could be uh, he could be into bonus time. Age 27 comps. So Ron Santo, Cal Ripken Jr., Adrian Beltre, Eric Chavez, Andrew Jones was amazing at age 31. So these guys got to hang on to 35. You know, Andrew Jones was a Hall of Famer until 31. He dropped off a cliff. So you got to kind of watch out for that one. Bryce Harper, Scott Rowland. So amazing names there top five three top five mvps top 10 mvp four all-star games two gold gloves a platinum glove a silver slugger so he's checking off all the boxes here um you know get him a get him a, a ring in, in san diego or some individual hardware but as far as the wins he might be too tough to ignore if he's uh, able to play at his level for another five years here so uh, the most important thing you can now if you're doing this for investment purposes you don't have uh, fair value for cards. I mean, you know, when you look at stocks, you're buying ownership in a company and there's a cash flow. If you're buying, you know, silver or gold, you can melt it down and you've got a sale price for, for cardboard. It's not there. <laughs> it's what somebody else will pay. It's like any, any sort of like Bitcoin or something like that. It's like, it's just what somebody's going to pay for it is what you know, beanie babies, all that stuff. So what, you know, can you have enough people that want it and what they're going to pay for it? And so you have to price it against each other. And so this is what I tried to do last time and find the relative value. And so uh, looking at this, you can see, 
you've got guys kind of in a in a certain tier and then you've got kind of the no doubters i would say you got a certain price and so i still like manny machado no one or not it was upwards of 300 dollars. that was a news thing it was a short-term thing longer term you know with these other guys on a hall of fame track uh, um, you know the freddie freemans you know hovering around 300 dollars. i think there is upside and i think there's a lot more of upside for manny machado for what he's doing and it's not being fully recognized at this point i don't believe but look at guys like devers bregman and ramirez they are on a track they're they're younger so there's more speculation to them but i think there's a lot of upside to these players here um Mankata, you know to an extent um, Matt Chapman, you know, I think Chris Bryant and Matt Chapman, they need to put in some more time and show that they're, um, you know, cut down on your strikeouts or you're going to be able to stay healthy and see what happens. So those prices are probably okay. And Anthony Rendon maybe got ahead of himself just a little bit. But again, if he's able to play till 37, 38, then he could be upwards of, of these players here. I like him plenty. He's cheap. There's a reason that he's cheap. Um, but I believe that he'll be such a, a high, you know, perform at such a high level like he has that he'll be able to do that for a few more years and really get in the conversation. I'm still picking up his stuff where it makes sense. So, all right, that's how I that's how I kind of call down the list of who I look at. Then I'll do the card ladder and my Fridays, my my market review stuff, and that helps me kind of figure out when I want to when I want to you know buy those cards. And it's more for fun because I'm not buying and selling a whole lot. I just kind of like to buy it once and be done. Um, but you know, that's how I use those tools in combination. So when I say that fundamentals tell you what should be happening, here's your fundamentals in the, uh, and the price action tells you what is happening. That's, that's the Friday one. So, uh, anyways, hope, uh, hope this was of some, uh, some interest or, or help. I know everyone has, there's a lot of great ways to measure this stuff. Mine is not the only way I've, I've, uh, I've learned a lot from other people as well. So i uh, love to hear about how other people kind of look at their fundamentals. Who are they looking at for the long term? What metrics they use? I always like to add to my to my knowledge. But uh, yeah, so anyways, that's what I do. And I uh, hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Thanks.